Hi, my name's Emily Zirkel, and I'm a senior at Kingwood High School. I'll be attending Baylor University in the fall to study preoccupational therapy and major in biochemistry. I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico with my mom, dad, and younger brother, Ethan. In Albuquerque, I remember going to the hot air balloon fiesta every year. We'd watch the balloons fill the sky with the sunrise and the sandy mountains in the background. While this is one of my favorite memories I have growing up, it was also accompanied by a very tragic memory. When I was five years old, my dad got diagnosed with osteosarcoma bone cancer. This news rocked my family's world. I didn't know how to cope with the fact that my dad would never be the same. He'd never be able to do the same activities that he once could. A year later, when I was six years old, my dad passed away. I was never viewed as a normal kid again after that. I was always overwhelmed with brokenness and pain. I'd hoped he'd get better, but when he died, it just felt like emptiness and like God wasn't there. I grew up in the church, but seeing such a tragic event play out in my life did not look like God's love on display. I especially remember being confused when I saw my mom experience the struggle of working while raising two kids alone. During the reception following my dad's funeral, I distinctly remember looking around my house at all the flowers and beginning to realize just how much love and help we were actually surrounded by. This shows that the worry and confusion we face during trials is overcome by the Lord's provision. This can be seen in Luke 12, 22 through 24, which said, Jesus said to his followers, so I tell you, don't worry about the food you need to live. Don't worry about the clothes you need for your body. Life is more important than food, and the body is more important than clothes. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest. They don't save food in houses or barns. But God takes care of them, and you are worth much more than the birds. From the scripture, I learned that the Lord's provision brings peace. Sometimes the trials in our life blur our vision of the future and allow us to lose sight of the fact that God will deliver us. Personally, I didn't see the light in the tunnel when my dad passed away. But in 2008, my mom met my stepdad, Caleb. Caleb reestablished peace and stability in my family, which is something that truly could have only come from Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord our provider. In 2015, Caleb's job in Albuquerque transferred him to Houston. Right when I was just starting to get comfortable again in my state of life, it felt like the rug got pulled out from under me. I lived in the same place my entire life, and moving felt like an impossible obstacle. But when we moved, my family immediately got us plugged into church, and it was there that I met my first friend that I had several things in common with. During my first year of high school, I met a lot of people that went to Second Baptist, and I kept hearing a lot of good things about it. So I talked to my parents about it, and we decided to try it out. Immediately, I felt welcome and at home, which was a feeling I never specifically experienced from a church before. I got plugged in with the youth ministry and started volunteering at Awana, which is a kids program we have here at Second. I realized so much about myself and grew as a person in a way I would not have been able to had we not moved to Houston. I look back on my story and relate it to Abraham in Genesis 22. God tested Abraham's faith by asking him to sacrifice his son as a burnt offering. Well, right as Abraham was about to sacrifice his son, verse 11 says that at that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. The common theme is that the Lord provides unexpectedly. When Abraham was uncertain of the outcome, God provided in an unexpected way. I never would have imagined that me growing this much as a person would have been a direct result from the trial of moving. But the Lord's provision never seems to happen how or when we expect it. Throughout my story, God providing for me has been the common theme. However, it's not merely the Lord's provision in my life, but the Lord's generous provision. When my dad passed away, God did not have to provide another father figure for me or my brother. But he did, and to take his generosity a step further, he provided a kind, Christ-centered, and loving father. When we moved, God could have given me any generic friends and a church I was forced to go to. But instead, he blessed me with friends that end their life with me and a church family I look forward to going to. This all points back to the idea that God's our loving father, and it's through his generous, unexpected, and peace-giving provision that painful and confusing situations in our life can be used to our benefit. 
Although the situations I went through were filled with agony and heartbreak, I wouldn't trade them for anything because it was through those moments that I grew closer to God and realized more of who I am through Him. Maybe looking back on your life, there are trials that you got through that you didn't recognize as the Lord's deliverance. But I encourage you to take a second glance to try and see how God was at work in your life and how He provided deliverance for you through that circumstance. Or maybe you're going through a trial right now and you feel like God's forgotten about you or that there's no way He can rescue you from the situation you're going through. He hasn't forgotten about you. He's at work right now in your life. Whatever trial it is that you're enduring, I promise you, he will get you through it. Wherever you are right now on your journey, just know that God is with you and he will provide. Hi, my name is Rachel Gillespie and I'm currently a senior at Kingwood High School and will be attending Texas A&M Corpus Christi this fall. I grew up in a Christian household and the youngest of five, and church was always a priority in my family. In fact, I've been a part of this church my whole life and can even remember when Mark Terry had a full head of hair. <laughs> I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart at age seven and went to every church event possible. I experienced what most people call the on-fire moments for the Lord, but didn't truly really start seeking after the Lord until the summer right before my junior year. I thought junior year would be easy and I could just cruise along, but I was so wrong. In the past, I'd experienced moments of peace, but in this particular season of life, it was different. Junior year started out with my school being flooded and having to be relocated for the time being. I was also involved in soccer, church, and had homework. On top of that, people started asking me what college I was planning to go to and what my future looked like. On the outside, my life seemed normal, but on the inside, I was constantly worried about when and where I had to be next. Then, a couple months later in November, my life got more chaotic when my family got the news that my grandpa had been diagnosed with ALS. Hearing this, I told myself I would have time to say goodbye and everything would be okay. Little did I know, that wasn't the case. The Saturday of that week, my mom woke me up telling the, me that my grandpa was in the hospital on life support due to a heart attack, so we had to leave right at that moment to say our goodbyes. All I could think in that moment was why now, why in the middle of everything? But now I know I wasn't the only one to question God. In Judges 6, Gideon asked, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us and where are his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us? Like Gideon, I didn't know what was happening and in a state of doubt. All my life I'd been told that God was good, but everything was that, that I was experiencing appeared to be contradicting the very nature of God. But through my doubt and frustration, I asked God to reveal himself. Driving to the hospital, I started to look out the window. It was so foggy outside that I could only see a building just as we drove right past it. I couldn't see what was ahead of me or what was behind me. This was a representation in my own life because for the first time I could recall, I was frustrated in my current situation and felt like there was no way out. Arriving at the hospital, the rest of my family was already there. We said our goodbyes. I thought God was absent, but at the height of my doubt and uncertainty, I found out my grandpa's nurse's name was Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. These words were what I had been praying for. And at the height, God answered my prayer in a simple but impactful way that I felt his presence in that moment. And now I under, tru, truly understood what Romans 8:28 says. And we know these things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are, according, who are called according to his plan. Walking out, up, walking out of the hospital, I looked in the lobby, I started to look out a window. The clouds had lifted and it was a clear day. Everything that I was told about God, about how he's good and faithful, didn't become a reality to me until I experienced it in my own life. Just like Gideon proclaimed Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace, all of us can experience God in this way. 
This story shows that no matter the doubts we have, no matter the circumstances we face, and no matter what storms we go through, when we place and keep our faith in the Lord, we will find for ourselves that through him with us, he doesn't just bring peace, he is peace. Hello, my name is Quentin Hankins. I'm the oldest of five kids in a graduating senior at Summit Creek High School, and later on this summer, I'll be joining our armed forces. Now, when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, I knew who God was, but I didn't really know him. I was a good kid, did what I was told, and tried hard in school, but that all kind of depends on who you ask. <laughs> And I believe that good things came to people who did good things. But that was all changed when my stepmom died, which was a surprise to me because she was one of the most loving and caring people that I knew. And I was confused as to why God took her away if he was such a loving and caring God. And at first, I was sad, but then that sadness turned into rage and resentment against God. And I was distant, distracted, and non-responsive to a lot of things. And then one day, my mom found, about, found out about a local event that was happening in our community in which the J High and High School Ministries come and go minister in Aldean by community service and helping and ministering to the kids, in which I later found out that was A1A. I didn't want to go, but my mom made me. While I was there, I tried to, tried to lay low and not associate with anybody, but eventually I was found out by some of the kids that were helping there. And for the rest of the week, they shared their testimonies, passion, and their love for God. At the end of the event, they invited me to come to the church, and I made a couple of excuses of why I couldn't go, but eventually, after seeing, after some constant questioning and seeing that no wasn't an option, I finally decided to say yes. Now, a little thing you should know about me is I'm not a real big people person, and it took a lot of convincing to get me where I am today. <laughs> Now, when I first stepped into Second Baptist, I was bombarded by all the people who loved and cherished God. And I was a little nervous at first, but God had other plans for my life, as he brought some of the most persistent people into my life to help me plug into the church. <laughs> now, one of my first and my biggest step was when I went to J High Beach Retreat, which I didn't want to go to that either because I'm not a big people person, but once again, my mother made me. <laughs> but it changed my life, so thanks, Ma. When it, but Beach Retreat was a lot of fun. I met a lot of new people, but the most important experience from the entire thing is when I came to Christ and got baptized. And from there, I've been helping in the church and growing in my faith, which has led me to be a part of some big, thing, big things here. Now, to come full circle, I even found out that A18 stands for Acts 18, which reads, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, I've experienced this firsthand in my life, as I was ministered to in my community, which led me to come to church, meet Christ, and make him God of my life. And in the same sense, I was able to go back and minister in the same community, my Jerusalem, and I was even able, even able to get the opportunity to go to the Dominican Republic, my ends of the earth, in which I either helped people come or know Christ. In Psalms 33, verses 18 through 19, it reads, But the Lord watches over those who fear him, those who rely on his unfailing love. He rescues them from death and keeps them alive in times of famine. This is what I felt like God did for me. He rescued me from death and brought me back to his unfailing love to heal me so that he can use me to do the same for others. In the Bible, there's a passage that reads, he said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, obeying his commands and keeping all his decrees, then I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus 15, verse 26. Now, I've, I've experienced this firsthand in my life. I, when I was, when my stepmom died, I was angry at God and didn't want anything to do with him. And then, but he brought me back to him through 818 and pushed me closer to him, pushed me to a great community, which led me, which led me to grow closer to him. Now, I'm still the same person in the sense that I obey my parents, still try hard in school and all, and all, and other things like that. But I still struggle, still deal with hardship. I 
I still deal with pain, I still deal with hardship, and I still struggle, but I know a loving and caring God, a God who heals. So my encouragement for all of you t today is that no matter how, how used, abandoned, broken you feel, no matter the problem, big or small, give it all to God and let him, let him do what he wants with it. Let him heal you. Hi everybody, my name is Levi Kai. I'm a senior in high school and I've been homeschooled my entire life. This fall I'll be attending Lone Star Community College in which I'll be studying for my international business degree. I grew up in a Christian household and I always went to church. And while growing up, I did karate, I played basketball, and I even ran track. So growing up, I had some friends, but I never had a close group of friends that I could go talk to or connect with. And that was really hard for me. I either hung out with either my older brother's group of friends or my younger brother's group of friends. So I was either the youngest or the oldest. But I wanna share with you today a difficult time in my life. When I was 13 years old, I fell into the trap of lust and pornography. I was ashamed of what I was doing and made the decision not to share my sin and to isolate myself from God and from other people. Because of that shame, it brought anger and depression into my life. I would still go to church and hang out with people, but I got in the habit of being a fake Christian and a good liar. And I felt stuck in my shame and I felt hopeless. And I lived like that for a while. But in August of 2014, I went to a camp that my family goes to every year. And that year at camp was different because there I found true hope for my life. Every night at camp, there's a time of worship and a devotional. And every night I felt like God was speaking directly to me through each of the different speakers. So on the last night after the devotional, I decided I was done living the life I've been living. I was done running away from God and I was done isolating myself from other people. So on that last night, I went down to the river that this camp had, and I had the opportunity to talk to the camp director about giving my life to Christ. So I then I decided to give my life to Christ, to repent for my sins, and to also to choose to live for him. After camp, I began to research and spend more time in scripture. And while I was doing that, I actually came across this verse, which is now my favorite verse. It is Philippians 3, 13 and 14. It says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to, to the win the prize for which God has called me heavenward and Christ Jesus. While I came across this verse, I found an analogy that best explains it. Imagine yourself driving down a highway at 80 miles per hour, looking back through the rear view mirror instead of your windshield. That would be pretty dangerous, right? Well, for some of us right now, we are living our lives exactly like that. Some of us right now are living in our past sins, or looking back to our past sins while going through life. And some of us right now are doing the exact same thing I did, constantly running from God and just isolating yourselves from other people. But that is not what God has for us. Look, God doesn't care about what we did in the past because he's already forgiven us when he died for our sins. We can live in victory knowing that Jesus Christ paid for our sins when he died on the cross and defeated death. Look, I'm nowhere near perfect, but knowing being forgiven for my sins and choosing to live for Christ has shown me that even in the darkest and roughest times of life, I don't have to dwell on my past sins. I can look forward to what God has promised for me. And a verse that gives me great encouragement in this is Psalms 59, 17. It says, O oh my strength, I will sing praises to you, for God is my stronghold, the God who shows me loving kindness. Throughout my life, I've been able to experience that same loving kindness. There's actually one of the many names of God that comes from this verse. That name is Elohi Chastai which means God of my kindness, goodness, 
and faithfulness. God was faithful to me as a friend and brought godly friends into my life that I can connect with. I've been able to go to a Bible study to learn more about Christ and who he is. And I've actually been able to open up to my family and grow in my relationship with them. And throughout these past few years, I've been blessed to have the opportunity to go on six mission trips. I've been able to go on, I've been able to go to Kenya, Africa three times, to Rwanda, Africa, to Estonia, and even to Panama this past spring break. On all these trips, I've gone with the same intentions, and that is to share God's good news of that same kindness, goodness, and faithfulness that he has shown to me. I've been able to share that with people who don't get the opportunity to hear it. And I'm even blessed to have this opportunity today to share that with you. So my hope for everyone here today is that you would experience that same kindness, goodness, and faithfulness that has transformed my life by forgetting what's behind you and pressing towards the goal, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord.